subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update hello friends welcome to my channel engineering media you are watching engineering media if you are new to this channel please click the subscribe button and also click the bell icon it will help me a lot so you never miss any new updates today we are going to discuss about corrosion engineering Corrosion engineering is the specialist discipline that requires application of scientific, technical and engineering knowledge along with natural laws and physical resources in order to design and implement materials, structures, devices, systems and procedures to manage the natural phenomenon known as corrosion. Types of Corrosion Situations Corrosion engineers and consultants tend to specialize in internal or external corrosion scenarios. In both, they may provide corrosion control recommendations, failure analysis investigations, sell corrosion control products, or provide installation or design of corrosion control and monitoring systems. Every material has its weakness. Aluminum, galvanized, zinc coatings, brass and copper do not survive well on very alkaline or very acidic pH environments. Copper and brasses do not survive well in high nitrate or ammonia environments. Carbon steels and iron do not survive well in low soil resistivity and high chloride environments. High chloride environments can even overcome and attack steel encased in normally protective concrete concrete does not survive well in high sulfate and acidic environments and nothing survives well in high sulfide and low redox potential environments with corrosive bacteria external corrosion underground soil side corrosion underground corrosion control engineers will collect soil samples to test soil chemistry for corrosive factors such as pH minimum soil resistivity chlorides sulfates, ammonia, nitrates, sulfide, and redox potential. The soil samples are collected from the depth from which the infrastructure will be installed because soil properties can change from strata to strata. The minimum test of in situ soil resistivity is measured using the Wenner 4 pin method if often performed to judge a site's corrosivity, but if the test is performed during a dry period, the soil's actual corrosivity may not be properly reported since underground condensation can occur on buried metals leaving the soil touching the metal surface is in a more moist status. This is why measuring the soil's minimum or saturated resistivity is so important. Soil resistivity testing alone will also not identify corrosive elements. Corrosion engineers can investigate locations experiencing active corrosion using above ground survey methods and design corrosion control systems such as cathodic protection to stop or reduce the rate of corrosion. Geotechnical engineers typically do not practice corrosion engineering and will refer their clients to a corrosion engineer if the soil resistivity is measured to be below 3000 ohm cm or less depending which soil corrosivity categorization table they are reading. Unfortunately, an old dairy farm can have soil resistivities above 3000 ohm cm and still contain corrosive ammonia and nitrate levels which will lead to corrosion of copper piping or grounding rods. A general saying about corrosion is, if the soil is great for farming, it is great for corrosion. Underwater external corrosion Underwater corrosion engineers apply the same principles used in underground corrosion control but will use specially trained and certified scuba divers for condition assessment, and corrosion control system installation and commissioning. The main difference being in the type of reference cells used to collect voltage readings. Atmospheric corrosion Prevention of atmospheric corrosion is typically handled by use of materials selection and coatings specifications. The use of zinc coatings also known as galvanization on steel structures is a form of cathodic protection and also a form of coating. Small scratches are expected to occur in the galvanized coating over time. The zinc being more active in the galvanic series corrodes in preference to the underlying steel and the corrosion products fill the scratch preventing further corrosion. As long as the scratches are fine, 
condensation moisture should not corrode the underlying steel as long as both the zinc and steel are in contact. As long as there is moisture, the zinc will corrode and eventually disappear. Humid and splash zone corrosion pile jackets encasing old concrete bridge pilings to combat the corrosion that occurs when cracks in the pilings allow salt water to contact internal steel reinforcement rods a significant amount of corrosion of fences is due to landscaper tools scratching fence coatings and irrigation sprinklers spraying these damaged fences. Recycled water typically has a higher salt content than potable drinking water meaning that it is more corrosive than regular tap water. The same risk from damage and water spray exists for above-ground piping and backflow preventers. Fiberglass covers, cages, and concrete footings have worked well to keep tools at an arm's length. Even the location where your roof drain splashes down can matter. Drainage from a home's roof valley can fall directly down onto a gas meter causing its piping to corrode at an accelerated rate reaching 50% wall thickness within 4 years. It is the same effect as a splash zone in the ocean or in a pool which has a lot of oxygen and agitation that can remove material as it corrodes. Tanks or structural tubing such as bench seat supports or amusement park rides can accumulate water and moisture if the structure does not allow for drainage. This humid environment can then lead to internal corrosion of the structure affecting the structural integrity. The same can happen in tropical environments leading to external corrosion. Galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion, also called bimetallic corrosion is an electrochemical process in which one metal, more active one, corrodes preferentially when it is in electrical contact with another dissimilar metal, in the presence of an electrolyte. A similar galvanic reaction is exploited in primary cells to generate a useful electrical voltage to power portable devices, a classic example being a cell with zinc and copper electrodes. Galvanic corrosion happens when there are an active metal and a more noble metal in contact in the presence of electrolyte. Pitting corrosion. Pitting corrosion, or pitting, is extremely localized corrosion that leads to the creation of small holes in the material, nearly always a metal. The failures resulting from this form of corrosion can be catastrophic. With general corrosion it is easier to predict the amount of material that will be lost over time and this can be designed into the engineered structure. Pitting, like crevice corrosion can cause a catastrophic failure with very little loss of material. Pitting corrosion happens for passive materials. Crevice corrosion. Crevice corrosion is a type of localized corrosion with a very similar mechanism to pitting corrosion. Stress corrosion cracking. Stress corrosion cracking SCC, is the growth of a crack in a corrosion vertical bar corrosive environment. It needs three conditions in order to take place. One corrosive environment to stress three susceptible material. SCC can lead to unexpected sudden and hence catastrophic failure of normally ductile metals under tensile stress. This is usually exacerbated at elevated temperature. SCC is highly chemically specific in that certain alloys are likely to undergo SCC only when exposed to a small number of chemical environments. It is common for SCC to go undetected prior to failure. SCC usually quite progresses rapidly after initial crack initiation, and is seen more often in alloys as opposed to pure metals. The corrosion engineer thus needs to be aware of this phenomenon. Filiform corrosion. Filiform corrosion may be considered as a type of crevice corrosion and is sometimes seen on metals coated with an organic coating, paint. Filiform corrosion on painted aluminum. Corrosion fatigue. Corrosion fatigue is fatigue in a corrosive environment. It is the mechanical degradation of a material under the joint action of corrosion and cyclic loading. Nearly all engineering structures experience some form of alternating stress, and are exposed to harmful environments during their service life. The environment plays a significant role in the fatigue of high-strength structural materials like steel, aluminum alloys and titanium alloys. 
materials with high specific strength are being developed to meet the requirements of advancing technology. However, their usefulness depends to a large extent on the degree to which they resist corrosion fatigue. The effects of corrosive environments on the fatigue behavior of metals were studied as early. The phenomenon should not be confused with stress corrosion cracking, where corrosion, such as pitting, leads to the development of brittle cracks, growth and failure. The only requirement for corrosion fatigue is that the sample be under tensile stress. Microbial corrosion. Microbial corrosion, also called bacterial corrosion, biocorrosion, microbiologically influenced corrosion, or microbially induced corrosion, MIC, is corrosion caused or promoted by microorganisms, usually chemoautotrophs. It can apply to both metals and non-metallic materials. High temperature corrosion. High temperature corrosion is a mechanism of corrosion that takes place in gas turbines, diesel engines, furnaces or other machinery coming in contact with hot gas containing certain contaminants. Fuel sometimes contains vanadium compounds or sulfates which can form compounds during combustion having a low melting point. These liquid melted salts are strongly corrosive for stainless steel and other alloys normally inert against the corrosion and high temperatures. Other high temperature corrosions include high temperature oxidation, sulfidation and carbonization. High temperature oxidation and other corrosion types are commonly modeled using the Deal Grove model to account for diffusion and reaction processes. Internal corrosion. The same principles of external corrosion control can be applied to internal corrosion but due to accessibility, the approaches can be different. Thus special instruments for internal corrosion control and inspection are used that are not used in external corrosion control. Video scoping of pipes and high-tech smart pigs are used for internal inspections. The smart pigs can be inserted into a pipe system at one point and caught far down the line. The use of corrosion inhibitors, material selection, and internal coatings are mainly used to control corrosion in piping while anodes along with coatings are used to control corrosion in tanks. Internal corrosion challenges apply to the following, water pipe corrosion, gas pipe corrosion, oil pipe corrosion, water tank reservoir corrosion th thus we are come to the end of this session for more updates kindly subscribe my channel if you have any suggestions regarding my channel kindly comment in the comment section you can also request your searching contents that i can make that in my next video